Yeah, um, we are traditionally a producer of sparkling wine. And traditionally, we use cold stabilization for our sparkling wine. When we decided to introduce wine-based mixed drinks, we discussed the possibilities to do the stabilization. And because of a, a lack of place for cooling tanks, and because we don't want any additives like CMC or these things in the products, we decided for electrodialysis. Some years ago, we did uh, some tests with a rented machine with the electrodialysis, and we were very satisfied with the results. But for some other reasons, we couldn't uh, implement this in our sparkling wine production. But uh, these positive tests um, yeah, forced us to invest in these modern technology. Do you also find any benefits from a sensory perspective in the wines that are treated like that? So, in other words, from a sensory profile, are there any benefits compared to the uh, cold stabilization technique? And that's a question for Professor Mutsune uh, as well. Does electrodialysis offer any extra benefits compared to cold stabilization in preserving the characteristics of the wine, the aroma, the body, the color, the texture, the taste? For us, uh, I, I cannot say that we have found uh, any positive um, things with the new techniques, but on the other side, there are no negative things. Uh, what is uh, for us also um, a positive thing, that um, you can better divide the different, um, yeah, different tanks of wines and different types of wines. With, with cold stabilization, you often have the problem with uh, contact crystals to the stabilization, that there may be a, a, a blend between the, the tanks. But uh, this was one of the positive things we, um, you know, which brought us to the decision. Oui, sur, le, sur la question. Now, uh, to answer your question, uh, when it comes to how the technology affects the characteristics of the product, all the people who took part in the evolution to solve the problem of tartaric stability. All the uh, scholars who have worked on that and all the tests uh, that have been carried out by the group of experts uh, set up by the OIV uh, would say that um, there would that there would be some differences uh, in the final result. Those who criticize the cold stabilization uh, techniques uh, from a qualitative standpoint uh, did not really attack uh, uh, the cooling process per se, but they would uh, um, attack other techniques uh, that would come with that particular uh, cooling technique. We know that uh, the um, success of this cold processing technique uh, um, in order to do that, you need uh, to prepare the wines uh, for cooling. The wine uh, undergoes uh, fining and clarification and filtrations uh, one after the other. And once the crystals have formed uh, uh, by refrigeration, so using uh, low temperatures, uh, it is necessary to filter the wine again to uh, screen these crystals. And it is these operations associated uh, with uh, uh, cold uh, stabilization that might uh, affect the wine more than the other techniques. Well, the other techniques, uh, when it comes to adding an inhibitor, because the strategy we are pursuing uh, for 
stabilization uh, requires uh, very often to induce crystallization using low temperatures. Or if you try to screen the ions away or take out the ions uh, to avoid oversaturation. Or you can add inhibitors uh, for crystal formation. And this is exactly what we're talking about, uh, the formation of crystals. Now, it is pretty clear that the products that may be added are well-defined, well-known, and so if they are foreign to the wine, they will contribute to uh, the authenticity and genuineness of the wine that you mentioned, that you referred to in your introduction. We do not have these characteristics here. Now, compared to when you use the manoproteins, which are naturally present in the wine. In this case, uh, to ensure stability, there are very specific quantities in order to obtain uh, uh, this effect of limiting the, um, the creation of crystals. And this technique will aim at inhibiting the formation of such crystals. Thank you very much, Professor. Can we say that uh, manoproteins have been uh, uh, mentioned? Um, now, can uh, Mr. Breguigna uh, tell us more about his use of manoproteins and uh, the benefits uh, that he has uh, encountered uh, in using this technique? Well, thank you to you all. I'd like uh, to mention that this is more of a practical approach. Uh, mine is more of a practical approach and not so much a theoretical or scientific uh, experience uh, that I have. Um, my experience uh, with manoproteins uh, dates back uh, to a few years ago when the product was first uh, um, marketed. Uh, the trade name back then was Claristar. And we assessed it uh, for two reasons primarily. A technical approach and one from the point of view of the uh, producers uh, themselves, so a practical and financial uh, approach. As the professor said, refrigeration implies a series uh, of uh, operations, which is additional filtering, the preparation of wine, and especially a number of risks uh, that derive uh, from the lowering of temperature and the absorption of the risk of absorption of oxygen uh, should any operation not work out as it should and uh, you expose wine to oxygen, hence absorption, hence the risk for oxidation, which means uh, that it is a very critical and dangerous phase. Uh, it is risky, it's not dangerous, but it is uh, possibly risky. So my approach, um, I would say, was immediately positive because uh, um, this new thing uh, mm, avoided that risk. In addition to that, you see, with the refrigeration, there is a precipitation of crystals, uh, and part of the acidity is subtracted, taken away, and uh, refrigeration is uh, a system which makes it possible to um, adjust the pH uh, at that moment. It is a totally different uh, uh, approach. And then you also have the economic uh, aspect to consider. You see producers always look at the economic cost. Uh, since it is a manoprotein and comes from yeast, uh, and this requires a complex uh, process, it is not chemical extraction as could be with uh, aerobic rubber and so on and so forth, uh, it, it, it is expensive. Uh, but I would say that uh, the approach uh, for entry level towards entry uh, products uh, mm, could be um, could suffer from the fact that it is difficult uh, to justify anyway the higher price. But if you consider what you lose in terms uh, of production due to refrigeration, because we know that a certain percentage is discarded due to that. 
and uh, since uh, you have the extra filtering vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, the other treatments uh, and uh, since you also consider uh, men work and uh, the cost of refrigeration, well, perhaps your assessment might uh, change and uh, you must also know that in many cases uh, you can also avoid uh, the insulated tanks uh, which we know are um, higher uh, in terms of economic uh, cost when compared to a non-isolated uh, insulated uh, uh, tank. Hence uh, our positive approach on both sides. And then uh, there was uh, a uh, further surprise uh, from the viewpoint uh, of the organoleptic quality in that vis-a-vis -vis, uh, refrigeration and with the addition of manoproteins in uh, wine and with reference to different products. And here I would like to anticipate that I have some experience with uh, white steel wines from traditional farming because in the organic sector you cannot use manoproteins yet. And we could also talk about that actually because other substances are permitted and I would say that, well, that is perhaps even more questionable and the representative of IAV is here. so. Certainly, we will hear more about that. But anyway, um, anyway, it is not possible in organic wines. We also saw a change in that manoproteins not only influence uh, tartaric stability, but also the quality of the wine. And when I talk about quality, I talk about balance, I talk about concentration, I talk about finish, I talk about important parameters for the quality of the product. Let me make an example, because obviously if we think of manoproteins uh, and amino acids with their sweetening properties, which is a hundred times higher than in sacrose, in some cases, then obviously you perceive after the addition a higher sweetness. So, when you work at the balance of the on the balance of the wine, you have to consider that. Again, going back to sugar, if you add a few grams uh, of sacrose uh, or something else uh, in the wine, when manoproteins uh, are added, uh, that addition is less. Uh, is less mm, strong in a way. I don't have any scientific evidence to offer you on this. This is something which is based on my experience. Uh, when manoproteins were, were added, also the sugar residue uh, was less. And you have an increase in acidity. And this is something that we did not find with CMC. But then with CMC, things changed again because, uh, of course, if you do something that has an impact at economic level, that is a, 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 major, uh, um, a major event. And with CMC, you have another uh, issue because with CMC, you uh, do not have uh, uh, protein uh, stability. I would say that uh, CMC is even more uh, selective. It is more aggressive uh, uh, towards proteins. So with um, carbo, uh, carboxymethyl cellulose, you have uh, to uh, add uh, or increase bentonite. And you also know that this has uh, an effect on the structure of wine and impoverishes wine. So this is uh, my technical views. Thank you. That is very, very clear. I have a last question for you, Professor. We talked about uh, CMC. And I would like also to know a bit more about uh, the legislative aspects of this uh, CMC uh, technique uh, that, if I understood correctly, 
um, vis a vis manoprotein is a chemical, artificial thing, uh, exogenous, of course. Uh, and uh, it, what about a legislative aspect? Uh, it is forbidden in some countries. I know that it is uh, permitted in our countries. But uh, perhaps in the future, that could be a, a constraint in relation to the usage of uh, CMC. So, vis a vis carboxymethylcellulose, CMC, there are countries where the usage of these substances is forbidden. Do you think that in the future, in terms of laws and provisions and rules in 10 years, say, we will also have uh, these limitations uh, which forbid using CMC? Well, without any uh, prospective study, it is very difficult to know what the situation will be in the future and what is going to be the evolution of the context. It is true that it is a very important issue because uh, uh, Tataric uh, stability pertains, I would say, to uh, almost all wines out of 145 million hectoliters of wine, uh, I would say that all of them are unstable when, when uh, produced. So this is really an important topic. And uh, different uh, positions are created, as you uh, mentioned. There are countries which, uh, due to their situation of the market and their situation, they avoid uh, using this way certain uh, uh, trade, uh, um, import and export. Um, on the other hand, we have OIV, which wants to favor uh, international exchange, and this is one of the important missions of OIV. The mission of OIV is not only that uh, of uh, authorizing new products uh, as uh, soon as research proposes new solutions. Uh, it is a reality that does exist, and uh, this has uh, to uh, taken into consideration by the producers. When uh, they decide uh, their strategies, and especially when uh, they decide uh, to have uh, certain uh, uh, equipment to be and um, uh, to be successful on international markets, and of course you have to be sure about what you propose. You see, we export, export to Japan, for instance, and uh, a number of products that, that can be used uh, for Tataric stability purposes are used not only um, to guarantee quality for our European uh, export to Japan. It is also important uh, that there are some uh, legislative uh, constraints and limitations. The trend, though, is to have more opening rather than limitations. Because you see, a number of international positions and stances will no longer be um, sustainable and uh, I'm talking about co-responsibility here. That is, it is important to save energy and uh, consider also production waste 
uh, with more attention because this means uh, an ethical approach to wine production. And of course, this has repercussions. They will have repercussions on the image of the product and uh, the image of uh, producers. The consumer countries which do not produce wine have uh, different interests, of course. Today, the adopted criterion by exporters is the criterion of uh, reliability in and uh, tataric stability electrodialysis uh, is doing very well in terms of that criterion because thanks uh, to the control uh, system each and every um, batch is treated in relation to its stability or instability. So there is no over-treatment when compared to other techniques, which means uh, that uh, we have uh, reached uh, optimum stability. The other stabilization methods, uh, the other technical approaches uh, that uh, serve the purpose of uh, giving stability can possibly offer different and other benefits, uh, for instance, in relation to being environmental friendly, which means that you have to make your choices while taking into account uh, the future. You have to have a foresighted uh, strategies, which in turn entail knowing very well crystallization processes and know how they work so that you can decide what to do for the future. And we also need to consider the evolution of the mine market, our positioning and the markets we address. So, you see, a producer will not have to be necessarily monolithic in adopting just one technology. It will have to adjust its decision and decisions in relation to the countries it addresses its production to. We now have a number of instruments and tools at our disposal that we can use, and we do um, also expect that. Uh, uh, um, here, uh, the audience will ask questions about that to go more into detail. Evolutions have taken place in the technological field, and of course, technology is developed when uh, an existing technology has some defects. At new uh, f new phase, uh, at each new phase, uh, the previous technique was criticised, uh, and this was useful in order to make progress. I think, for example, of uh, refrigeration, which uh, uh, entailed uh, saving energy massively. So it is legitimate to expect progress. I really will welcome uh, the audience's uh, questions because I hope to uh, receive inputs uh, from them. Um, they will be able to identify what we have to pay attention to. But we do have techniques that we know very well today with the pros and cons, and this helps us uh, making the right decisions and reflecting upon things. Um, uh, of course, we have also to think of the future market of wine, but I'm not an economist and I can't say anything about that. Well, thank you very much. Before opening the floor to questions, I would like uh, to translate with images uh, and into images what you said. I imagine the technique of electrodialysis as a Mercedes. Meaning that it is a reliable car, absolutely reliable. And this also mirrors uh, the image we have of Germany, something reliable where you know the uh, time frame, you know the cost, and you know you will meet your objective in an efficient uh, way and reliable way without any uh, squandering of time and costs. It is a luxury car, but actually you can 
basically afford it. Also because you can rent a car and it is a very precise thing. Since it has this sort of surgical approach in guaranteeing tetaric stability, it also preserves the organolectic properties of reds and whites. And then, and this is my picture of electrodialysis. Then, when I think of nanoproteins and especially Clarister, I think of a motorbike. This is a Ducati. An entirely different world which goes for flexibility, being uh, in nature, driving easy, so to say, riding easy. You are uh, in the environment you see nature, you are in nature, you feel the wind, you feel it also when coming to wine, everything which has to do with the nature of wine